Thank you for joining us, spending your valuable time with the InfoWars family. It is Wednesday, the second day of November 2011. We had an incredible radio show today. That's all archived here at PrisonPlanet.tv with Dave Mustaine of Megadeth. His album going to the top of the charts, 13, just coming out yesterday. Jesse Ventura, out of the 30, 40, 50 interviews I've done, the most powerful, bar none. Towards the end of this transmission, if I have time, I'll mention a few of the amazing things that Governor Ventura talked about. In fact, he even got into uh, a little bit of discussion about running for president with Ron Paul. So a lot is going on behind the scenes. Very exciting radio show uh, today. Very informative. But this news transmission is going to be even more hard hitting. So please stay with us. Uh, we have a gentleman who has worked with the natives uh, up in um, Canada for decades, who has exposed a government genocide program against the Aboriginal uh, Native Americans uh, in Northern North America. He's going to be joining us with breaking information in our interview segment in the second half of the transmission this evening. And I'll get into uh, the main body of the news and a whole bunch of different video reports that we have for you this evening. But first, I want to direct all of you watching to the document cam right here. This is Sky Television. That's Fox in Europe and England. And you can go watch him give the speech in Hebrew. And they translate it into English. Israel considers preemptive attack on Iran. When you read the article, Netanyahu says he wants to go ahead and strike them. They've only got a few weeks until the reactors are up and running, and then it causes a Chernobyl disaster if they bomb them. So we're talking about weeks here, a month maximum. As I told you two weeks ago, I said two weeks ago, I said two weeks from now, they plan to go with the green light to hit Iran. That's when we're going to go into the danger zone here. Again, you heard it here first from our sources. Just letting you know, I don't announce something unless I've got it from four or five good sources. In this case, I had it from even more. Let's continue with Sky Television here. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu is trying, again, the green light, trying to rally support in his cabinet and with the Knesset, it goes on, for an attack on Iran, according to government sources. Now, that doesn't mean it's going to happen, but it means he wants to do it. And the, the, he had to get rid of his own Mossad chief, his own Joint Chiefs of Staff chairman earlier in the year because they said it was going to be a disaster, just like the U.S. government and the British have told him. But this guy was quoted in the Washington Times as saying privately, he told some of his aides who talked to the Washington Times last week, that he wants to be on his Churchill fighting Hitler. So it's all about Benjamin Netanyahu, you know, being the big king here and uh, doing this. And, of course, the United States also would like to have war to, to distract from what's happening with the big banking takeover and what's happening in Europe. So they could, I guess, at the end of the day, you know, let Israel act like they're operating unilaterally. But that's not what's really happening. And, of course, you got this guy. I mean, I mean, this is just quite a crew here. And uh, most Israelis are, by the way, against the strike on Iran. But this could trigger World War III. So I told you that two and a half weeks ago I got criticized for it. I told you they were going to announce they want to hit Iran. Look, not only do I have the sources here, remember they launched that whole fake story where the used car salesman was going to attack the Saudi ambassador, and then all these U.S. government experts came out and said it was total bull a day after I came out and said it was bull. I mean, my point is I know what I'm talking about. I do my homework. I research probably six, seven, eight hours a day. And so we've been proven right again. This is out of Israeli news. U.S. fears uncoordinated Israeli strike on Iran. And they go on to say, basically, it looks like Israel is going to strike them. Now, that could change. If we are able to stop this dangerous military adventure, then we'll be accused of claiming that there was going to be an attack when there never was a plan. But again, that's only targeted at low-grade morons. Okay, that COINTELPRO, that government disinformation. Now let's continue here with another article. That's, that's, this is out of Israel. That's out of uh, Fox in Europe. Uh, let's go ahead and go to this article. This is the London Guardian. UK military steps up plans for Iran attack amid fresh nuclear fears. They're about to release a new UN IAUA, International Atomic Agency, whatever it comes out to. They're about to issue this big alert. I got to love Herman Cain coming out today and saying he's worried about China trying to develop a nuclear threat. They've had it since the 60s. I mean, since the 90s, they've had ICBMs that can vaporize 
the entire United States. Uh, IAEA is what it is, International Atomic Energy Agency, having one of those little uh, Alzheimer's moments a little early there. So that's just, oh, and of course, who is behind this overall global crisis? You can go back to the document cam. I'll be talking about this cover from the Austin Chronicle, itself run by a one percenter, um, telling you about all the bankers. He means middle class people uh, down the street. But at the end of the day, it is the global financial oligarchy. Uh, you notice the Pope called for world government or his, his, his main body called for world government and world bank last week. You punish the banksters. Uh, I guess, uh, by uh, giving them even more power. That'll certainly show them to set up a bank of the world we all pay carbon and VAT and sales taxes to. So I'm going to ha have a little comment about uh, the head of the Austin Chronicle and their longstanding uh, disinformation tactics against us uh, before this uh, transmission ends. So there you have it. Right now, Israel itself, its leadership, is getting ready and trying to sell the world on a preemptive strike on Iran and all the bedlam that that will trigger. Uh, and meanwhile, those of us that have been warning people about this are being criticized by the disinfo trolls. But meanwhile, my cousin three weeks ago was deployed to Kuwait, and uh, now it's in one of these articles. At the end of the article, they mention uh, from the New York Times that the United States is preparing to back up Israel's attack, if needed, from Kuwait and surrounding areas. In fact, let me just let me just go ahead and pull that up for you. So citing unnamed officials and diplomats, the newspaper said the repositioning could include new combat forces in Kuwait able to respond to a collapse of security in Iraq or a military confrontation with Iran. In fact, let's just show people out of Ynet there out of Israel. See that? And that was in the New York Times on Sunday. And I did cover that. Of course, I already knew my cousin had been sent to Kuwait for this and told you. And I already checked with a bunch of other sources, including lieutenant colonels and even higher ups, I won't even mention. There it is. See, I'm right. I'm right. I'm right. I'm right. I don't come on air and say things for attention. I come on air when I have facts. I'm all about credibility. We have the credibility. We know what we're talking about. Period. Okay? All right, I'm done. Just, you know, I always got to come out first and announce things to people. And then even when I'm right, I get the blame for it. And I'm quite frankly sick of it. And you know what? If we stop this crazy attack on Iran, they'll say, oh, where's the war on Iran, Alex? They're saying in the Knesset they're getting ready for it. We're trying to stop it. And you people out there, I told you we were in a depression three years ago. Now they admit we are. I mean, do you like being conned? Do you like being ripped off? Do you like being lied to? Do you like being schmucks? Like being suckers? Like being marks? Like being jokes, like being seen as idiots. You think it's cute to be morons? And I'm not talking to our regular viewers and listeners. I'm talking to the COINTELPRO, the people on government payroll and others, paid to come out and lie about us. I'm not upset you're lying about us and attacking me. At the end of the day, that actually just gets us more attention. And in a way, God turns your attacks into a victory. No weapon formed against us will prosper. I'm worried about you and your delusional state. I'm worried about you not being on the winning team of liberty, okay? So admit you've been morons and come in and wake up and stop World War III before it's too late. You think the depression's bad right now, you ain't seen nothing yet. Governments always start these things when a depression is taking place so the politicians don't get the blame. They've got riots and demonstrations in Israel over the imploding economy. Netanyahu wants this to become a political savior. You got that? When all, else fa when all else fails, they start a war. This is serious business. Netanyahu is in the Knesset calling for war. Washington says they're getting ready to hit. Two and a half weeks after I told you so. This is real. We've got to call Congress. We've got to call talk radio. We've got to pray, whatever. We've got to stop this. This could easily lead to World War III. I'm not going to go into a long treatise about that. We've covered it at nauseum. Oh, man, I'll tell you what, we wouldn't be in this position if people weren't in such deep denial. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and get into the next little piece of news here. And this deals with something we knew was coming. Homeland Security's announced they're going to be at shopping malls, train stations, they already are, checkpoints on the highway. You think you're just not going to fly and not have some pot-bellied perv grab your daughter's breast or, or grab your genitals and make sure that, you know, they're not wavos? 
This is about making sure men don't have huevos in this country. This is about absolutely breaking your will and training you to live in domestic checkpoints. And they've got all these videos now, these training videos they air in hotels all over the country. In fact, we have a clip of the video. They can play a clip if they want over us saying, don't trust anybody. Terrorists are everywhere. Oh, my God, there's a bag on the floor. A box blows out of a car in Austin. They shut down highways and have bomb disposal teams. I mean, it's just uh, don't trust anyone but the government that's gang raping you. And it goes through all these disgusting reports, and now they're putting up lamps, uh, street lights that have microphones and video, videotaping you. I mean, it's just unbelievable. And they admit that, that, that uh, Big Sis is tracking all your Twitter comments, and they've got a FEMA takeover of all communications drill uh, November 9th. It'll, be, it'll happen during my show. It'll happen at the start of the uh, third hour, 2 o'clock Eastern. It's going to take over XM, AM, FM, UHF, VHF, shortwave, everything. Never done this before in 60 years of the EAS system. Right around the time, reportedly, looks like Israel's green-lighted to hit Iran. And again, we can turn this around, but you're not safe anywhere, not in hotels. Departures, bags and parcels. The same things that make America's hotels and motels inviting for guests make them attractive targets for terrorists and criminals. Oh, yeah. As someone who works or stays Look at that. in hotels That's motels, the... Uh, Larger Kelly, Maryland Hotel. Back that up. Side. That's where Bilderberg met. That is right in the middle of a bunch of defense contractor deals. So they're selling hotel staff, but they're also showing this to hotel people. They're selling them that there's just terrorists everywhere. And my God, they're hiding in cornfields. They're hiding in hotels. Don't trust Larger anybody. Small. Your customers they're coming in are terrorists. This is about invoking a total hysteria. Can help keep them safe. If you see something, say something. Sounds like the THX 1138 robot voice saying, we're here to help. That's enough. I can't watch any more of it. Get it off. They, they've announced they're going to be at sports stadiums everywhere, and they are. And, and, and you go to the shopping mall, and there's big screens saying, trust no one but big brother, big sis. I mean, this is beyond, beyond 1984. And they're just getting started. They're just getting started because criminals took over society. They know that we're awake. They know that we're involved, and they've got to bring in a total control grid. And when you get the actual government training manuals that we publicized and made national news with, it's not about Muslim terrorists that they just gave Libya, Al-Qaeda. It's all about gun owners, conservatives, libertarians, uh, land rights activists. It's all for the American people. Never forget that. In fact, Jesse Ventura pointed out today, this is martial law, and he's been under martial law in the Philippines. All of this is just incremental martial law for the total implosion of America by design, by the crooks that engineered all this. Okay, let's continue here uh, with the news. Again, we're teleprompter free, so I just have my notes of the next segment I want to go to. Again, this is only teleprompter free news in the country, and normally these guys send down their talking points, everybody regurgitates them. The left has their fake points, the right has their points. We're just here for freedom and liberty and historical facts. Uh, the Fed's outlook, they have come out and said that uh, they think that the country is basically uh, going in to a serious crisis and, the, and their outlook has been downgraded. There's now a triple dip, uh, they're saying, in the housing market. I told you three years ago from all the economists I talked to in my own research, we were in a depression then. But as long as they keep telling you with a PSYOP everything's fine, well, then there's not a problem. And as Jesse Ventura said on my show today, people aren't protesting Wall Street and the free market. The media is spinning it that way. They're protesting certain elements of Wall Street, i.e. the Federal Reserve's buy-off and hijacking of Congress, of our government, and their new super Congress. So that's what's happening on that front. But we've got another report here. You know, you've seen more than 100 cases, even mainstream media has had to admit, that it's all fake, where they go get some prison convict or some mentally retarded person and give them hundreds of thousands of dollars and they'll dress up in a uniform and They'll say, I'll give you 50,000 more of you talk about blowing up the Miami FBI building. Remember that case? But the black Rastafarian potheads, they said were Muslims. It was all fake a few years ago. Well, now they've moved on to 70 and 75 and older uh, geriatrics uh, and, uh, you know, talking them in to just shooting their mouths off while they're drinking beer about blowing up the government. They got... One guy, Frederick Thomas, uh, to talk about a novel he read written by a Fox News reporter 
uh, where the government is poisoned with uh, ryacin. And boom, they admit that the government gave them the bomb, everything else. So, listen, I've been at, a, at DVD signings, at films I've shown. I've been at book signings, at, at, at book people here in Austin. I've, I've been at events. And there's always an off-duty cop walks over and says, hey, let's attack. Let's blow up things. And I go, you're a cop. I followed them outside and seen their, their unmarked police car. I had uh, State Department uh, diplomatic security, uh, Marine Corps intelligence, uh, come up when I was eating dinner at the Hyatt outside the Bilderberg meeting. Uh, it was a few miles away. Uh, and say, let's attack the State Department. And I said, you're giant, 45-year-old, 250-pound muscle-bound assassins. You're obviously cops with high and tight haircuts. And they're like, well, we're just checking to make sure everything's all right. But they were first, let's attack the State Department together. You know, this is the, and, and, and if they find some old drunk, go, yeah, let's do it. It's like, ladies and gentlemen, we stopped a major attack today. My goodness, we're so, so lucky. Here's the headline. Fed's online novel played role in Georgia militia plot. And who is it? A couple 70-plus-year-old gentlemen, deadly. Uh, there are actually a lot of deadly 70-year-old men. I guess they've got a point in a way. Evil, evil, evil veterans. Uh, continuing, um, a sheriff has come out who's in Arizona, Sheriff Paul Babu, and uh, he has uh, said that uh, Fast and Furious is a bigger scandal than Watergate, and Attorney General Eric Holder got caught again testifying he knew nothing about it, even when he gave press conferences two years ago admitting they were running this. So he's been caught, as we've shown in past transmissions here, and others have been caught in absolute total and complete 110% perjury. And Babu has also said Holder should resign because of Fast and Furious and a whole bunch of, well, over two dozen Republicans have called for that as well. The only problem is they don't really need to resign because as uh, Issa has admitted, the Republicans were involved in this pre, pre Obama. This has never stopped. Drugs are allowed to be shipped in. Certain cartels are shipped guns to knock out their competition. It's a $500 billion a year industry. You better bet big global banks are involved running it. And they've been proven running it. That's come out. Okay, continuing. How do you stop it? Total drug decriminalization today. Not that I use any of that stuff. I've studied history. I know that the mobsters tripled their profits. Corruption expanded. The police got corrupted during alcohol prohibition for nine and a half years. Now... Let's go ahead and get to overpopulation. Uh, there's all these different groups coming out saying the population in the next 50 years is going to hit, you know, 15 billion or whatever, 14 billion. But all the UN's own actuaries say it planes off at eight and a half to nine billion in 2024. And because of the aging population, if you don't have two adults who have two children, there's no one to take care of them or pay for their social security. The same thing that third worlders know, hey, I want a bunch of kids to take care of me when I get old. Well, it's the same thing when you have a monetary system, you need two people to pay in for every two people that are about uh, to uh, go into retirement. And uh, we have the fifth episodes of PRI's popular Population 101 series. We aired a few of these earlier in the week. Now, this video takes a fresh, humorous approach to the demographic issues facing the world today. Be sure to copy the video. And it's got a link to it on YouTube. Uh, and so we're going to play this clip by this research group uh, that has uh, put together this information and help you get it out to others. Uh, here is that video. Population 101. Seven billion people. Will everyone please relax? At some point in the year 2011, the Earth will hold seven billion people on its surface. More people than any point in recorded history. While some welcome this latest member of humanity with excitement, others with fear. When people hear that we've been adding 1 billion people every 15 years, they imagine humanity's growth to look something like this. But 1 billion people isn't as high a percentage of humanity as it used to be. For instance, imagine this roller coaster car represents 1 billion people. If we add another car, or 1 billion more people, our train has doubled in length. But if we want to double the train again, we can't just add one more train car. We'd have to add two. 
Every time we make the train longer, one train car represents a smaller and smaller percentage of the train. If it takes 15 years to add each new train car, then mathematically speaking, the growth rate is slowing. In order for the growth rate to stay constant, the train would have to keep doubling every 15 years instead of just adding one car. Human population growth is the same way. In 1804, the world's population hit 1 billion. By 1927, that number had doubled. But by 1960, that number had only grown by half. By 1975, it was only growing by a third, and then a fourth, and then a fifth. To see how population growth is slowing down, we look at a number called the global total fertility rate, which is the average number of children each woman is having. And over the last 40 years, that rate has been rapidly falling. According to the UN's current data, the world's population is due to peak in 25 years. After it peaks, it will start to go down. By the end of the century, we'll be losing 1 billion people every 20 years. This year, the world's population will hit 7 billion. In 75 years, we'll be back here again. Think about it. All right, so that's the Population Research Institute, and their information is 100% dead on. The UN even has these numbers. So the truth is, once you get a big population, they have a bunch of kids. Most of it's third world, so they're having a bunch of kids. But now that's all slowed down, so the increase is slowing down. And then it actually turns into a nightmare 50 years from now as population starts actually going down. It's going to be basically like the U.S. worldwide or Japan where there's just giant cities of old people and nobody to help them or take care of them. Of course, I guess they'll have robots or something, but uh, it, it planes out at $8.5 billion. And then it starts going in, into decline. Instead, the globalists are cutting off all of our resources in the name of supposedly fixing things, and it does nothing but cause all sorts of uh, social unrest, which they then use to take even more of our rights. This is eugenics. The elite want 90% of the population reduced conservatively. You know, some reports were 80%, now it's over 90. That's what the universities are putting out. Can you imagine 500 million people on the planet? Uh, that's a little more than the United States, basically. Okay, let's continue here. That's like 90% of the Chinese dead, 90% of the Indians dead, 90% of the Mexicans dead, 90% of the Americans dead, 90% of the Iranians dead, 90% of the Israelis dead, 90% of the Russians dead. Can I go on here? Let me break down a little bit more with this next clip, Population 101, the fact that to just replace two humans, you need 2.1 more at least to continue a civilization. See, once you have a big population, you've got to continue to have one or your existing population collapses. Here it is. From the time of the cavemen all the way until today, humanity continues to exist because each generation of people has produced another generation to replace itself. Scientists have figured out how many people need to be born each generation to replace the generation before. That number is one person per person. All things being equal, this creates perfect demographic balance. Since women are the only ones who can have children, replacing every person on Earth means each woman needs to have two children, one to replace her and the other to replace the man who cannot have children. The total fertility rate is the average number of children each woman in a society is having. This number shows us if a society is growing or shrinking. In developed countries, the replacement rate birth rate is 2.1 children per woman. This will keep the population stable, but even that is assuming that every woman has children and that there are no wars, famines, or disease. In the real world, disasters happen all the time, and sadly not all children reach adulthood, especially in poor countries. This pushes their replacement rate up to 3.3 children per woman. Since not every woman wants to have children, in order to keep the population stable, some women need to have more than 2.1 children to balance the birth rate with the women who are only having one or no children at all. Maintaining this balance is of the utmost importance. If society does not at least replace itself every generation, human numbers begin to fall exponentially. Economic and social problems appear as elderly people retiring begin to outnumber young people entering the workplace. This is already happening all over the developed world. Many of the world's nations are only barely replacing themselves, while a growing majority have birth rates below replacement, some as low as 1.8 or even 1.2 babies per woman. Many societies are facing a very real danger. Extinction. Oh. 
You see, that's what's amazing about Planned Parenthood and all this. It, it, it's, it's being enforced in the West that's dying. And by the West, I mean industrialized countries, Japan, United States, you name it. It's just incredible. And they know exactly what they're doing. Now, I want to hit two more articles on this front. Uh, here is the Huffington Post, and they have the headline, I am the population problem. <laughs> And you got to love all these trendy women who say they don't want to have kids, so they hit about 40, and then they're desperate to have them. Uh, but this is part of the lecturing. And I tell you, even when I was in college 20 years ago, most women were like, I'm not having kids. It's bad for the earth. Uh, I mean, these, and then, of course, by the time they hit 40 and are totally empty, they're absolutely unhappy. But this is the cult. My, you know, well, I, I have three children. And I routinely, and my wife's had this happen, have trendies walk up in Whole Foods or other places and say, how dare you have three children? I mean, th this is their religion, and they don't understand anything. It's a dangerous group of control freaks. But the state has always sought to take control of reproduction. Uh, here's another report, though, and this is out of Peru, and it uh, deals with the fact that the L.A. Times is reporting that more documents are coming out. Uh, on the forced reduction of population and sterilization. And they've done this through vaccines as well, but they would also forcibly sterilize women. That's going to tie into our interview that's coming up later, uh, dealing with what's happening uh, in Canada. But uh, this is something that's been going on for decade after decade all over the world in covert operations. Uh, now, continuing here, uh, finally, I want to get into... Um, the whole communist angle. Communism in the real political paradigm is created by the oligarch bankers to enslave the public in a communal system controlled by the state. Then the money is transferred offshore. But even in communist China, Mao Zedong's wife was put on house arrest for the rest of her life and actually put on trial. Uh, he was towards the end of his life. The Chinese themselves, their government says he killed 80 million. Our government says 64 million. But he's not even liked by the communist power structure. This guy killed more people than Hitler and Stalin combined. But I see restaurants named after him in the U.S., Canada, and England. I see trendies wearing his shirts. I've talked to them. And they say, listen, I like Mao, and I want this to be here. Uh, yeah, you'd like working as a slave on a farm. But uh, at one Occupy event uh, in Philly... Uh, a fellow got an interview with a person dressed up as Mao, and, and, and they're really serious. They believe Mao is going to bring them liberation. This just shows how this free market system has made this country so wealthy and so powerful that in a way it's, it, it's, it's produced people totally disconnected from reality. Here's a short clip of that. Carrying the Chinese flag. Because I'm a Maoist. Why are you a Maoist? Like, why, why, why does this organization, uh, this Occupy Wall Street, appeal to you? It appeals to me because I got screwed over by the capitalist system myself. I lost my job last year because I wanted to transition from male to female with my gender identity. But how did the capitalist system make you lose your job? Can't you watch have, this. You have a boss that doesn't Homosexuality in China is illegal today. They kill you for it. They'll put you in prison for pornography, just a playboy. I mean, this idiot doesn't know this. And, 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 and they have no idea that, I mean, go, go to China and try dressing up like Mao and telling folks about your gender thing. I mean, I personally could care less. The point is, this is a system where you're allowed to do that. They would take you and harvest your organs in five minutes flat. Pornography is illegal and it's punishable for distributing it by death. In fact, we always do this live on air. Guys, Google uh, 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 Chinese sentence to death for pornography. I'm talking about regular porn. Regular porn, if you're distributing it, and this person wants to get up here and say, I, I, I like Mao, let me tell you, Mao is really gonna let you uh, dress up like a woman. I mean, like, a, and again, these people want you to get upset uh, by their sex stuff. But personally, stop trying to take my property, my guns, go off, to, you know, whatever. But see, the issue is you're not, are you? No, you, there it is. Pornography is now punishable by death in China, Chicago Tribune. That's uh, from 20 years ago, or, 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 yeah, 20 years ago. My God, time's flying. I mean, I'm sorry you people don't live in the real world. I do.
God, I wish I could talk to that person. It's like, holy mackerel, you know what? You're not a woman. You don't have a womb. You can't have kids. Go out and get a woman. Find out, even if you don't like women, it's great to have children. It's great to have a family. It's outward designed. I know they taught you it was cute. You get back at mommy and daddy by all this stuff, but come on, man. Come on. Come on. China's going to let you dress up like, like uh, Mary Poppins? No. China's going to shoot you in the back of the head and blow your brains all over the place. Little stupid commie. All right, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done with them for now. Whew, these people, they are attacking our system, and they have no idea what the rest of the world's like. God forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. Okay, okay, this is going too long here. Uh, because, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, let's get to this. Now, I, I remember being at Charlie Sheen's house about a year ago, and he was telling me, oh, yeah, I heard a new Red Dawn's coming out. By the way, I should show it on air. I have the Wolverine jacket. Charlie gave me that. I, I actually have the Wolverine Wolverine and Alex is lying. I've shown it on TV before. Anyways, it doesn't matter. It's just more weirdness. So when Dave Mustaine told me he's going to come to Austin and hang out with me, I'm sure he will. It's just the, I love Dave, but the weirdness level of it's off the chart. Of course, there's a lot of other even crazy stuff. The point is, I, I learned of this a while back, and, and, and then I learned it was come out this year, but the Chinese government got mad about it criti criticizing in, in the remake, not the Russians invading, but the Chinese uh, over unpaid debts. And so they made it North Korea. They went back and digitally changed every scene to where it's North Korea. But still, the communist Chinese who execute people for uh, pornography or for transgender stuff or for being gay, uh, they are now censoring our media as our biggest debt owners. That is, they bought the bankster debt. And Prime Target Security on their YouTube channel shot this video. And we went and checked with the company. This is indeed their set in Pontiac, Michigan, and it just got released. So this is a first look uh, at the communist occupying uh, the uh, Pontiac, Michigan. And a lot of these signs look like Occupy Wall Street, at least what the Democrats were promoting, i.e. the Federal Reserve that endorsed Occupy. Fighting corporate corruption. Your freedom has been a lie. Liberation is here. Deceitful leaders, greedy corporations. This is not democracy. And, and the idea there is, the, uh, back that up. The Internet is lies, but uh, you can... Uh, you can only trust, uh, you know, the government, basically. And by the way, we have David Cameron in England announcing Internet censorship. We have bills introduced to restrict free speech in America. We got the White House regulations are Cass Sunstein calling for it. I mean, it's on. It is definitely happening right now. So there is a first look at Red Dawn. Reportedly, they got a distributor, and it's coming out early 2012, and I will be promoting it just because a foreign country tried to restrict America's free speech and America's right to expression. Again, to the guy or the, the woman, whatever, you, the person saying that they love Mal because he'll let him dress up like a woman. Listen, they'll shoot you in the back of the head. They're already trying. I'm not the Chinese people. They hate it. But the Chinese government's already trying to censor American movies, and I've had enough of it. So another message to you on that front. Uh, get some reality, okay? And figure out that folks, you know, if you're going to say you're a woman, dress up like that and go to work. Don't tell them, I'm a man now, I'm turning into a woman, and make everybody hear about your sexual stuff all day. It'd be like if we had two heterosexuals in the office kissing in front of people and making a big deal about it. Go get a room. Get out of here. We don't care. We got stuff to do. We're not here because you want to upset mommy and daddy. A lot of us don't care about your sexual stuff. We're past it. It doesn't shock us. We don't want to see it. We don't want to look at your giant ferret teeth, okay? All right, I'm sorry. Just because you like to dress up like Marie Antoinette isn't my problem. <sighs> Just keep your hands off my firearms my money, okay? I'll keep, you, you can dress up like whatever you want. Yeah, we got this piece. CDC, I, I knew about this years ago, but they've got a new angle on it. Natural News has got a, a, a great breakdown on it. For decades, they put mercury in the vaccines. Then they said they'd taken it out, but they only released certain lots that didn't have it that were available if you jump through 15 flaming hoops on a blue moon. CDC officials removed large amounts of data from the study that showed a decline in autism rates following the removal of the Marisol, the Agency then twisted the remaining data to imply an increase in autism rates following the removal of thimerosal and suggesting there was no link between thimerosal and autism. Next slide, please. Upon submission of the CDC's tainted version of the study to pediatrics, the study's authors can 
contacted CDC officials to let them know that the agency had incorrectly interpreted the data. They tried to tell the CDC that its figures and conclusions were wrong uh, the, and that the uh, corrections needed to be made. But the CDC went ahead and said, we don't care, we're going to publish it. The CDC allegedly responded by saying that it would take a look at the incorrect data, but proceeded to submit the corrupted version of the study to Pediatrics Journal anyways. CDC ended by convincing the journal to publish the fraudulent study, which did no three. Yeah, but let's go over what the data showed. They never took the th thimerosal out. So they said, oh, look, it's still going up when we took it out. They put out a mandate that vaccine makers create small lots of vaccine that didn't have thimerosal. That's what they call the clean vaccine, the, like the German government got during the flu thing that the public didn't get. Remember that story? So, yeah, it's like saying, yes, uh, Barks Root Beer puts out 100 cases a year that doesn't have caffeine, but our other million cases does. So we can now say caffeine's out of all of our root beer. No. The, the, the thimerosal was still in most of the vaccines. It was just taken out of a small amount, and that's how they play the game. Okay, wow, a lot of stuff we just covered there. No rest for the wicked, uh, as they say. Uh, but we have a review here of the movie Contagion with uh, sometimes Infowars.com radio fill-in host, uh, and he's also our on-the-road coordinator. Next year, we're going to be speaking in a lot of locations around the country. Uh, reporter Richard Reeves uh, went and saw the movie and said it was amazing. Uh, of course, it has Matt, Davin, uh, Matt Damon in it. I was about to say it the way they say it in, in uh, Team America. Matt Damon. But the point is that he went and saw it, and here is his review of the film dealing with a mass contagion, everybody taking uh, a new vaccine to treat it. Here's the report. Hello, fellow Info Warriors. Richard Reeves with a short movie review on Contagion. Starting out with the release date, 9-9-11, September 9th of 2011. Right there, some level of concern needs to be given to this movie, and we need to really watch what's going on because we've been under threat of bio-warfare terrorism now going on 15 years, maybe even 20 years or longer. So this movie could be one of those lone gunman type of events where we need to watch out what's going on because right, like I said, from the release date, 9-9-11, cause for concern right there. And watching this movie, right off the top you realize that this is a big budget movie i don't know how many millions of dollars were in their budget but it was far flung all over the world scenes from hong kong to chicago to san francisco to minnesota to other parts of the world as well as the movie title suggests contagion is about a biological virus that is spread by contact very easily amongst the human population they uh, say ultimately the CDC is the one investigating this biological virus and they come up with that it's a combination of pig and bat and then some other entity that they can't really diagnose and it's spreading like wildfire, basically doubling on a daily basis. Luckily for the human race, a lot of the people are immune to the virus. So we are left to wonder though, is this a biological New World Order perpetrated attack or is it just something that happened due to natural circumstance and right at the end of the movie which I want to give you a spoiler alert right now make sure and watch for the end of the movie because basically you kind of get to decide whether it's man's activity or a big corporate monster out there unleashing this for potential profit and gains frankly the most realistic biological disaster movie that I've ever seen. They really went to great lengths to make it as realistic as seemingly possible. So a lot of telltale signs that uh, these biowarfare attacks could be on the agenda for the NWO. As a matter of fact, in one of the scenes, Dr. Cheever, uh, played by Lawrence Fishburne, said that we should see about trying to get this vaccine put in the water like we do with fluoride. So there you have it, folks. So watch for that last scene, and you can help in telling us what the full message of this movie could be. All right, Richard Reeves, thank you. We're going to go to break. We're going to come back with our next guest and the fact that in these foster homes, reservations in Canada, half of the Indian children are dying. Half of them. 
And we got the big money bomb, 27 hour transmission kicking off 11 a.m. tomorrow. The free streams, it's all posted at InfoWars.com and InfoWarsMoneyBomb.com. You can start donating now if you'd like. InfoWarsMoneyBomb.com so we can give the New World Order a hardcore black eye and take this fight to the next level. Stay with us. Ron Paul, a visionary who predicted the financial crisis, a leader with a plan to solve it. The Paul plan? Balance the budget. Cut a trillion dollars year one. Eliminate five federal bureaucracies. End the foreign wars and nation building. Rein in the Federal Reserve. Pay down the debt. Cut taxes to create jobs. Ron Paul, a plan to restore America now. I'm Ron Paul, and I approve this message. If you believe in this information and want to support its viral spread, go to the InfoWars store at InfoWars.com. We've got the new G.I. Joe InfoWars t-shirts. We've got the incredible ProPure gravity-fed filters available at InfoWars.com in the store. We've got a new DVD, Sign Us Under Attack, the Don't Tread on Me flag. We've got all sorts of different bumper stickers to help spread the rebellion virally. It's all there, wristbands, citizen rule books in every order. Order online at InfoWars.com today. The water filters, the canteens, it's all there. InfoWars.com. Our mission at InfoWars.com is to audit the Fed, abolish the Fed, restore the Constitution, abolish the TSA, restore the Second Amendment, restore the Constitution, restore the Republic. And if you believe in those goals, then it is your free will responsibility and honor to spread the word about our operation and to donate to the 2011 money bomb. For many years, I tried to basically stay small, make my films, do my radio show, but it grew and grew and grew. Think about how a money bomb that listeners started four years ago led to us being able to move into this bigger office. A later money bomb helped us expand into the empty warehouse next door. And in the last year, we have built the TV studios and put the equipment in and are now doing a nightly news show every night at 7 o'clock that we're now beta testing and getting ready for television. Right now, going out to members at prisonplanet.tv and then reaching millions as it spills out onto YouTube and other systems. Help us go to the next level. Not reaching 15 million a week, but reaching 30, 40, 50 million a week. Our growth curve is exponential, but we need to hit our afterburners and turbocharge. History is happening now. The war for human liberty against total dehumanization is on now. Join us Thursday, November 3rd at InfoWars.com. We're going to have a 24-hour-plus live transmission with guests and interviews starting at 11 a.m. and running into my next radio show the next day. We're going to have a huge lineup of liberty-loving patriots from all over the world joining us. It's going to be amazing. And this money bomb is going to have a lot of new things added to it that's going to make it even more powerful than past years. So please donate at InfoWarsMoneyBomb.com or InfoWars.com forward slash money bomb or simply spread the word about the money bomb. Stand with InfoWars.com and my incredible crew and all of our other supporters and help us get the word out even more. The ball is in your court. The rest is up to you. It's InfoWars Money Bomb 2011, November 3rd. It kicks off 11 a.m. Visit the website at InfoWarsMoneyBomb.com, InfoWars.com forward slash Money Bomb. Welcome back. It is InfoWars Nightly News, the second half of this November 2nd, 2011 transmission. And we've had a lot of listeners contact us and say, hey, you interviewed Kevin Annette three, four years ago in 2007. Have him back on. There's been even bigger developments since then. And we can put on screen a Globe and Mail article that was also in the Ottawa Citizen and other papers admitting that half of the children taken from natives um, in the different orphanages in Canada died 
at least half, and they say tuberculosis, other things. Well, Kevin Annette uh, is a uh, former minister of the United Church of Canada. He is the author of um, Love and Death, The Valley and Hidden from History, of the Canadian Holocaust. Again, he authored two books about Canadian Aboriginals, Love and Death in the Valley and Hidden from History, The Canadian Holocaust. And uh, he joins us to give us an update because a lot has happened since then. And a few months ago, he tried to fly into England, which Canada is a commonwealth of, supposedly has that right, and was barred from flying in um, because he was going to speak at a child abuse rally. So, again, uh, he's digging into this, literally digging into it. Uh, and I've seen a lot of demonization campaigns and things going. But we do know that in these particular orphanages, according to the Globe and Mail and other reputable newspapers, half the kids died. Now, wow, I mean, if there's orphanages and half the kids are dying, and we're talking about in the 60s and 70s, something is going on here. And, of course, before that. And now they've gotten permission from some tribal councils to dig in in the last few weeks uh, into reported graves. Uh, so this is starting to really come to a head. And we saw Michael Savage, love him or hate him, banned from flying into England ever because he criticized Muslims. I mean, where is free speech going in the Western world? Why can't Kevin Annette who works and lives uh, with the uh, natives, the aborigines, uh, what people would call, I guess, Westerners, Indians. Uh, I, I mean, why can't he go to England? Uh, and so he joins us uh, now uh, to, to kind of boil down what's happened in the past and what's happening in the present and where he sees this investigation going in the future. Kevin, thanks for joining us. Thank you, Alex. Break it down. Uh, where did this saga start for you and how deep does the rabbit hole go? It goes pretty deep and it's not uh, over yet. The, the story for me started in 1992 as a United Church minister on the west coast of Canada. Very first native home I visited as a clergyman, they told me about a murder in the United Church residential school. In the years since then, I've begun to uncover this wider story to the point that now not only has the Canadian government since our last interview been forced to issue a formal apology, but party leaders in parliament actually stood up and referred to mass graves of children and half the children never coming back. So this has been officially acknowledged, but at the same time, the Canadian government and the churches have done their best to conceal the whole thing through a very controlled uh, so-called Truth and Reconciliation Commission, where people are not allowed to name names or talk about wrongdoing, and the churches have actually been legally absolved from any of the wrongdoing. So that's why we've continued our, our own investigation uh, with the Mohawk people around Brantford, Ontario. We're now conducting surveys and actual archaeological digs on the site of the oldest residential school in Canada. And we're convinced that this is going to show the final evidence, the forensic proof of uh, how and why so many children died. And I, I've seen reports in the news that the government's tried to get tribes to block you, but, but the tribes have now given you uh, access. I mean, the fact that they're trying to block you uh, really, really does add a lot of credence to what you're saying. But you were talking about this first, you know, as you said, 15, 16, 17, 18 years ago. In the last four years, they've now admitted half the kids dying. How, what's the time frame here? And how many orphanages? What's the setup? How did you discover this? Well, the, the schools, like in America, the schools, uh, and I don't want to call them schools, they were really internment camps. Uh, there was very little education offered to the children. Uh, they were camps where native kid, children under law since 1920 uh, were forced into these schools. Over 100,000 or close to 200,000 children went through. So we're talking 50 to 100,000 children never came back. One of the reasons that they, so many died is because of a practice of deliberately housing children sick with tuberculosis with the healthy and then never treating them. So they were using germ warfare to kill off large areas of, of the country of their native populations. And again, this was a phenomena in America as well. We're already beginning to make links with groups in America that are finding the same crimes, the same kinds of mass graves. And uh, this is something that the, the culture can't deny. They can simply evade it by pretending that they've somehow addressed the issue when in fact they haven't. I've also seen reports, uh, confirmed reports, about in the 70s a program where close to half the natives were sterilized uh, here in the United States, native women. Well, we know about eugenics programs, not just against n Native Americans, but others uh, for making lower than a B plus on their, on their grade cards. You know, we've uh, uh, covered that in my seminal film, Endgame Blueprint for Global Enslavement. But I also have seen reports here where they demonize you 
in Wikipedia and other places for daring to protest. They use uh, terms how horrible it was and that you were harassing practitioners. You know, how <laughs> dare you go with some natives uh, to a church uh, where uh, you guys believe there are people involved that have been involved in the cover-up, and how dare you speak up? I mean, again, they're just really trying to demonize you. Very much. I mean, to give you an example, last Sunday we went down to a, the, the Holy Rosary Catholic Cathedral in Vancouver. We were simply trying to enforce a banishment order. The local Squamish hereditary chief said to the Catholic, Anglican and United Churches in Vancouver, it's time for you to get off our land. You never legally came here. You stole this land and you've murdered our children and you won't even return their bodies. And so we were simply peacefully, nonviolently enforcing an eviction order. We were met on the front steps by the Knights of Columbus who brutalized people there, pushed them down the steps while the Vancouver police looked on and did nothing. So, you know, who's the per perpetrator of violence in this situation? We're simply saying it's wrong to have committed mass murder against children and then never returned their bodies, never admitted any of this, and gotten off the hook legally, which is what's happened in Canada. Like many other countries, like Ireland and America, the same kind of indemnification of the churches has gone on. And so, you know, we have to say, look, the, the issue here is mass murder and genocide and ongoing crimes against humanity. It's not, you know, the way that they're trying to make it look like it's an issue of one crazy white guy. That's hardly the case. We have continued people coming forward, eyewitnesses. If you go to our website, hiddenfromhistory.org, there's an interview with Irene Fable, who's an eyewitness to seeing a little baby thrown live into a furnace by a Catholic priest in a Saskatchewan residential school in 1944. She witnessed it. Now, in any other country, there'd be a mass uh, investigation. There's nothing happening in Canada about this, and we're trying to get this uh, changed by bringing in international attention. We want to get this in international human rights courts and have Canada and its churches charged with genocide. Well, uh, Kevin, you know, again, all I know is your parliament has admitted some of this has gone on and been confirmed. They admit half these kids are dying. I mean, that's an incredible number. Uh, so this stonewalling um, isn't going to work at the end of the day. And, and I think back to even New York Daily News uh, a few years ago admitted that they take foster children and test pesticide drugs on them till they die. Uh, they radiated 4,000 plus U.S. children in secret radiation studies. And then you learn all over the world native groups are used in these experiments. And it's like there's some type of global psychopathic uh, guild uh, that is just getting off on all of this. Uh, so, I mean, uh, it's crazy to not investigate it. I don't know all the little specifics of, you know, the cases that you're looking into. You know, I mean, all the little details. Uh, but, but, but why would they ban you from flying into England? Because from what I've read, you're a Canadian citizen. You've got a right uh, to, uh, to travel in the Commonwealth, just like I have a right to travel in the 50 states. Right. Well, the short answer, Alex, is that the Crown of England and the Vatican are the two main perpetrators of this crime against humanity. And we have an eye, had an eyewitness. He died suddenly in hospital. His name was William Coombs. And he's a native man who, as a child, claimed to have witnessed the Queen of England, uh, Elizabeth Windsor, and Prince Philip come to the Kamloops Residential School in October 1964 and leave there taking 10 children with them, none of whom were ever seen again alive, seven boys and three girls. We wrote to Buckingham Palace, asked the Elizabeth Windsor whether she had any information on those disappearances, never received a word back. William was to come and testify in London about that incident. He died very quickly in the hospital. Uh, basically, they, they induced a coma in him and then pulled him off life support after less than 48 hours. I talked about that on the air. I was about to come to England and discuss it, and I was simply not allowed into the country. No reason given at all by the UK border agency, simply banned without cause. Were, was the royal family in Canada at that time? Yes, they were. According to the uh, records which were on the internet, you can look it up. The royal visits in uh, the 10 days in October 1964, the Queen and Prince Philip were visiting Eastern Canada, but uh, you know there was a period of time when they could easily have flown out to British Columbia. Wow. Well, come on. I mean, they are Transylvanian royalty. I'm sure none of this is true. Uh, uh, wow. Uh, just, you know, truth is so much stranger than fiction. All I know is I got the Globe and Mail, I've got the Toronto Star, I've got the Ottawa Citizen saying that at these facilities, half the kids were dying. And like you said, this wasn't some place where they had tuberculosis. This is where they were taking kids with it. It's like the old British manuals uh, from 250 years ago, uh, right before this country got founded, French and Indian War, saying, yep. take the blankets from your troops that have it, lance their boils, make sure it has fresh pox on it, give it to the natives. Yes, uh, 
Uh, as a matter of fact, in, in uh, hiddenolonger.com, which is my where all my research is posted online, uh, there's a thing from the uh, Jeffrey Amherst, who is the British colonel in Nova Scotia, who kept a journal about how he did that. In 1749, he ordered the, his uh, troops to distribute smallpox blanks among the Mi'kmaq Indians, and uh, that's on record in his own journal. Uh, we have lots of other of that kind of first-hand evidence, and just uh, 20 yards from where I'm sitting is the Nanaimo, uh, the grounds of the Nanaimo Indian Hospital, where this was done to Native children right up to the 1980s. And, you know, you can't get on that ground anymore. It's controlled by the military. They won't let anybody on there. But there are mass graves, you know, very near where I'm sitting. It, it's all over the country. And we released a list of 28 of these mass grave sites. We're going to be going around to these sites with our own grand penetrating radar over the next year or two. And so this is concrete evidence we're going to uh, take out to the world over the next year. Tell us where you're digging now. In the last few weeks, and it's now been sent to the labs, what you've discovered. Well, uh, we're at the oldest Indian residential school site in Canada. It's called the Mohawk Institute. It was set up by the Crown of England in 1832. Uh, uh, generations of Mohawk children were there. Over half of them didn't come back, according to their own statistics. And we've been invited by the Ong Wahanwe, or the Mohawk people, uh, to, to come there, we've conducted ground penetrating radar surveys and some initial test digs where uh, bone fragments have been discovered. Also, massive soil dislocation on the site of, of graves. So, in other words, they, they piled 10 or 15 feet of soil on top of these graves. And also, we found a tunnel system under the school where eyewitnesses have said children were, were, were uh, their bodies were taken through those tunnels to the furnace room where they were incinerated. So, uh, we're going to be going in there. The important thing to understand is this is under Mohawk jurisdiction. They're not going to let the uh, RCMP or the police onto the site. They've claimed that this is their land and they're going to do their own crime investigation. So um, over the next month or two, we're going to be doing exactly that. We're going to be doing the analysis of these remains and, uh, uh, you know, present a report in the new year where we have, we believe, conclusive evidence that the Crown of England and the, the Anglican Church and the, and the Vatican were involved in these crimes right in Brantford, Ontario. Well, we know about all the stuff the Vatican's been caught doing and the cover-ups with the kids, uh, and we know about the Boy Scouts. Turns out there's a list of 5,000 or more known molesters that they won't release. And it seems like these institutions is where all these crazies try to go and take over institutions like towns that get corrupt police so they can get away with having all this power. And uh, it's, it's all I know is your government admits Half the kids died at these places. I mean, I mean, th th those numbers, that that magnitude uh, is so incredible. You know, I saw some of the photos we were just showing that you provided to us, uh, and it showed uh, you know clothing, what looks like bones. And again, this has just been dug up in the last week, uh, and it's been sent off to be tested. Uh, but uh, what's going on with what else have you found in these digs? Well, the elders at the, in that community don't want all of it released at this point. There's a lot of an attempt by the government of Canada to shut down this dig, and so the people are trying to uh, keep some of this under wraps for now. But I can tell you, and I've been authorized to tell you, that we have found evidence to confirm what eyewitnesses have been saying, that children were buried on the, uh, in, for generations were buried. And as a matter of fact, we've discovered a letter from a former principal at the school, a man called Zimmerman, who was uh, in 1948 in a letter said, Due to austerity measures, and this is a direct quote, due to austerity measures, we are, we are now burying children two to a grave, unquote. Unbelievable. Now that's, now, that's the principle admitting that they're burying, that their children dying at such a rate that they have to put two of them in a grave at a time now. Unbelievable. That, yeah. So, I mean, right out of the horse's mouth again. Now, we're going back four years ago here. If I'm going from memory and all the articles I read at the time, we showed one of them earlier, but I'm correct in, in that they were basically starving them as well. I mean, it was a... An I, mean, I mean, we're hearing the word austerity. It was about, you know, depriving them, getting them into this state, and then also taking them from their parents or families, correct? I mean, this was a CPS-type operation. Absolutely. It was the law in Canada that the children had to be taken from their parents. The parents would never see them again, or sometimes not for 15 years or more. That's like with the uh, Cherokee, the program they had to send them to the uh, East. So this is this forced breakup of the family still going on in Canada. When? Yeah. That's uh, the last school closed in 1996. But it's important to know, Alex, that the, there's more children now in white foster care homes than were ever in residential schools. The breakup, the deliberate breakup of Native families, is continuing. This genocide is carrying on. And, and now they've moved, as Russell Means has said here, and others. Welcome to the reservation. Hitler said he took his plans from the reservations in the U.S. Uh, the British had. Uh, 
admittedly use that in other parts of the world as well. And now they're doing it to everybody. Black, white, they don't care. This is a total assault on the family, on humanity, on everybody. Uh, China has this model. My God, this is so cold-blooded. Well, that's right, Alex, and, and I see proof of it every day working with Native people on the streets of Vancouver and every Canadian city. Uh, there's uh, Native people are continually targeted by the police. There's over 500 missing Aboriginal women that are never accounted for. We know that the uh, serial killer in Vancouver, uh, uh, Dave Picton, who's now in jail, was actually working with members of the RCMP. We have our uh, eyewitnesses who saw police bringing women out to the, the, the farm where he was making snuff films and killing these women. We've identified grave sites of these women around Vancouver. The media and police will not go there and touch it. So basically, with the vampires, and, and psychologically they are vampires, that's what these psychopaths are in history, that's where the legends come from, with these vampires, natives are fair game, they're seen as the food, but now they're running out of them, they're moving on to everybody else. I'd say that's accurate. You know, the, uh, the, the, the child trafficking that goes on, and here's another uh, thing we're beginning to look at, through the baby adoption racket, uh, the Catholic Church is heavily involved in baby trafficking through their maternity homes where they force, nat uh, especially Native women, but many, any white girl this can happen to too, they're, they're criminalized. If you, ha if you get pregnant uh, uh, and you're not married, you're convinced by these uh, Catholic priests and others to sign away your baby. It's called the BFA protocol, Baby for Adoption Protocol. They force the mother to sign away their child in utero uh, while they're still pregnant, and they never see that child again, and, and who knows what happens to these babies. So it's a big racket, and it's the same way that the Catholic Church in Spain uh, stole 600,000 children. Uh, during the Franco uh, regime, and these children, their parents were told that they died, and they, they've trafficked them out. So Hitler did the same thing. Look, yeah. look there's no doubt this is history, uh, and, and all I can say is you need to obviously be careful because you're into some very, very serious waters here. And uh, you know, we've, we've had several websites up on screen. Uh, we uh, have, uh, if you'll put that particular site up uh, uh, beneath him, uh, uh, we have one that's in uh, itcs.org. Is that a good one to go to? That's our tribunal website, and that's got all the recent updates, so people should definitely go to that one. Okay. Uh, you've got the final comment uh, in uh, 60 seconds or so for any other points you'd like to uh, make, uh, Kevin Annette. Thank you, Alex. Uh, basically, the tribunal that we're conducting is operating in the United States, Canada, Ireland, uh, England, right around the world. We need people who have eyewitness testimonies of how these crimes are ongoing, including what happened to Native kids, but also white children. Any of those crimes we need reported and documented, so please contact us, hiddenfromhistory1 at gmail.com. I'm on a U.S. speaking tour all for the next few months, starting in Syracuse, uh, New York, and anywhere people want me to come and help document this, please contact me. It's about the present livelihood of our children and our very lives and liberties, so please be in touch with us. Well, from the ancient Romans to the Aztecs, every corrupt dominant culture wants to take away the right of children from parents and break up families. I mean, you know, Caesar would go in and kill all the parents and keep the kids. Now they just take your kids away and get, you know, give you a bottle of Prozac. Uh, amazing information. So people want to get in touch with you or contact you around the United States. Uh, it's, it's, it, it's good to see you investigating, and I look forward to getting updates from you in the next few weeks, the next few months as this unfolds. You sure will. Thank you, Alex. Thank you so much, sir. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's, it's hard to you know, look at this type of stuff. It's painful. It's scary for those of us that aren't on the dark side. Good people have a, have a major blind spot. We just can't imagine this is happening. But history shows the stuff that Kevin just talked about is unfortunately the tip of the iceberg. And we have a super class of predators, sadomasochistic scum, uh, that, that are running our society. And as bad as the stuff you heard, I mean, from what I've researched, a lot of this stuff gets even crazier. That's why it's important that we stand up against these people. I'm not just going to fight tyranny at 10% or 20% or 50%. I'm going to go 100%. And that's why we've launched the nightly news here for PrisonPlanet.tv viewers and everybody else who sees this in the hundreds of thousands and millions across the web. That's why we have the syndicated radio show. That's why we have the news websites, InfoWars.com and PrisonPlanet.tv. And I want to ask all of you watching this feed tonight to please call your friends, your family, your neighbors, and tell them to tune in to the 27-hour live broadcast that starts at 11 a.m. tomorrow and runs right through 
uh, until the end of the show on Friday. We're going to have an incredible lineup of guests and researchers tomorrow, and it's all going to be carried at InfoWars.com. We're going to preempt the nightly news tomorrow and continue out of the other studio. I'm Alex Jones signing off from the front lines of the Info War. God bless you all. We couldn't do it without you and the crew. And Lord willing, we'll see you back tomorrow, 11 a.m. Central, for the kickoff of the 27-hour InfoWars Money Bomb 2011. God bless. Our mission at InfoWars.com is to audit the Fed, abolish the Fed, restore the Constitution, abolish the TSA, restore the Second Amendment, restore the Constitution, restore the Republic. And if you believe in those goals, then it is your free will, responsibility, and honor to spread the word about our operation and to donate to the 2011 money bomb. For many years, I tried to basically stay small, make my films, do my radio show, but it grew and grew and grew. Think about how a money bomb that listeners started four years ago led to us being able to move into this bigger office. A later money bomb helped us expand into the empty warehouse next door. And in the last year, we have built the TV studios and put the equipment in and are now doing a nightly news show every night at 7 o'clock that we're now beta testing and getting ready for television. Right now going out to members at PrisonPlanet.tv and then reaching millions as it spills out onto YouTube and other systems. Help us go to the next level. Not reaching 15 million a week, but reaching 30, 40, 50 million a week. Our growth curve is exponential, but we need to hit our afterburners and turbocharge. History is happening now. The war for human liberty against total dehumanization is on now. Join us Thursday, November 3rd at InfoWars.com. We're going to have a 24-hour-plus live transmission with guests and interviews starting at 11 a.m. and running into my next radio show the next day. We're going to have a huge lineup of liberty-loving patriots from all over the world joining us. It's going to be amazing. And this money bomb is going to have a lot of new things added to it that's going to make it even more powerful than past years. So please donate at InfoWarsMoneyBomb.com or InfoWars.com forward slash money bomb or simply spread the word about the money bomb. Stand with InfoWars.com and my incredible crew and all of our other supporters and help us get the word out even more. The ball is in your court. The rest is up to you. It's InfoWars Money Bomb 2011, November 3rd. It kicks off 11 a.m. Visit the website at InfoWarsMoneyBomb.com. InfoWars.com forward slash Money Bomb.